Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the tragic loss of Air India Flight 171. I'm Geoffrey Thomas, and I'm delighted to say, joined once again by my co-host Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt, Germany. Good morning to you, Richard. And good afternoon to you, Geoffrey. Now, viewers, I know we said that we're going to answer your questions today, but we've come up with something else. Um, and this episode is actually called Implausible. So we said the preliminary report raises more questions than it gives answers. We said the preliminary report is an insult to the families and the aviation community. We are now saying the preliminary report is perplexing. Yesterday, we raised questions about the captain's operational track record. Today, we're raising questions about the takeoff role and the RAT deployment. The data in the preliminary report is simply not plausible on both the takeoff role and the RAT deployment timeline. So, Richard, let's kick off with the takeoff role. Yeah. Well, we've written another technical memo which addresses uh, critical inconsistency uh, in the Air India Flight 171 preliminary report concerning the takeoff performance timeline, specifically the sequence and timing of the so-called V speeds, V1, VR, V2, and Vmax, which were reported. They are physically implausible for a Boeing 787-8 at the declared takeoff weight and configuration. We're showing a screenshot with the key parameters uh, taken from the report. And uh, I'd just like to go through those briefly. They are, uh, we're told in the preliminary report that the takeoff rolls started at 080737 UTC. And this is taken from the A-SMGCS replay which is the airport ground radar. It's actually only used when there's uh, poor visibility, but uh, obviously it was up and running, and so they had the timeline. Um, the aircraft, of course, are Boeing 787-8. The takeoff weight was 213,401 kilos. The configuration was flap five, and uh, the both the flaps and the gear were not retracted after takeoff. The thrust setting was TOGA as a takeoff go around. The runway length 3,505 meters. The temperature 38.9 degrees centigrade. The pressure 1,001.1 hectopascal, which is a pressure altitude of 2,442 feet. And V1 was 153 knots after 56 seconds. VR, 155 knots after 58 seconds. V2, 162 knots after 62 seconds. And Vmax, 180 knots after 65 seconds. The reported timeline suggests the aircraft accelerated from V1 uh, to VMAX, 153 to 180 in just nine seconds, and from V2 to VMAX in only three seconds. And with flaps five and gear extended, this rate of acceleration, approximately six knots per second, is aerodynamically impossible at this takeoff weight. The Boeing performance data confirms that flap and gear drag in this configuration impose significant acceleration penalties. So the VFTO or VMAX values are normally only reached after cleanup, i.e. after gear retraction and flap retraction, and this did not occur. So is the statement, Richard, in the preliminary report that VMAX was 180 knots a typo or a misunderstanding or obfuscation? 
Well, it's unlikely it's a typo. Um, if you're typing the number 180 and you really meant to type 280 or 130, I mean, those figures aren't plausible. So um, given the early climb for a clean uh, configuration. Um, however, 180 is plausible if you have a clean configuration. So it seems it's most likely a misunderstanding between what was expected to happen and what actually did happen. Yes, but Richard, the investigators have all the uh, black box data. They know the airspeed at each point in time. Uh, so that doesn't figure. Yeah, exactly. So it is per perplexing. Um, as you say, they have the uh, FDR data from the EAFR. So why guess at what the airspeed should be when you actually know what it was? And why not just simply state what the maximum airspeed reached actually was? Moreover, uh, V2 is not a momentary point in time event. V2 is defined as the minimum one engine inoperative OEI takeoff safety speed to be achieved at 35 feet above ground level. Reporting V2 as achieved four seconds after VR reflects a misunderstanding of its function and certification role. This appears not just to be a misunderstanding, but it almost borders on incompetence. What else did you find out on in this in this investigation? The V speed timeline in the preliminary report does not match a realistic Boeing seven eight seven dash eight takeoff performance at two hundred and thirteen point four tons in the hot and high density altitude uh, conditions. The claim that 180 knots was reached three seconds after V2 without configuration cleanup is physically invalid. The data either reflects a misinterpretation of the FDR timing, a misuse of the V-speed definitions, or just simply a need for correction in the final report. Now, Richard, you've been also investigating the RAT deployment again because you've been looking at this for the past three weeks, scratching your head about it all. So what have, we, what have you discovered now? Well, I was showing a screenshot from the RAT timeline um, from the preliminary report and the preliminary report presents a sequence of events obtained from the FDR data from the EAFR as follows. 080839 UTC, the transition to air mode, that indicates a liftoff. 080842, three seconds later, the maximum airspeed 180 knots was reached. 080843, engine one fuel cutoff switch, transition to cutoff, that's four seconds after liftoff. And 080844, engine two fuel cutoff switch, transition to cutoff, that's five seconds after liftoff. And then at 080847, the RAT provided hydraulic power. The EAFR data confirms the fact that the RAT hydraulic power is being provided only four seconds after engine one and three seconds after engine two shut down. All available data from Boeing asserts that the RAT requires at least six, if not seven seconds post deployment to provide hydraulic power and 10 seconds to provide electrical power under optimal conditions. If we assume optimum conditions, the RAT would have been deployed at 080840 at the latest, which is only one second after liftoff at 080839. Hmm, but 080840, 
40 UTC is three to four seconds after the fuel switches fuel switches were moved to cut off. It's uh, before three to four seconds before the fuel oh. switches were moved to cut off, and that is perplexing. And you know we fall into this trap time and again. What the preliminary report is stating and what it's leading us to imply compared with what is actually going on. Mm. And the CCTV footage obtained from the airport showed the ram uh, air turbine, the rat getting deployed during the initial climb and immediately after liftoff. And they show a nice picture uh, of it. And, mm. you know, the question immediately, what does that mean? Is it one second or two seconds after liftoff? The video is at 30 frames per second. Um, so it could be quite precise about the timing. Um, and the FDR data uh, on the RAT deployment is looking, they're looking every second and it's accurate to within uh, half a second. So, you know, it's completely perplexing. So what do you conclude now from your reanalysis of the RAT deployment timeline? Well, I think it's a demonstrable fact that the RAT deployment was not caused by the transitioning of the fuel switches because it was deployed well before either switch transitioned. Mm -hmm. And I get that from the EAFR data, the Boeing data, and the CCTV footage. So why the RAT deployed before the fuel switches were repositioned to cut off has yet to be determined. But the essential fact remains that it was deployed well before the fuel switches were transitioned. And this is indisputable in my view. But the inference from the AAIB preliminary report is that the rat deployed as a result of the fuel switches being moved to cut off. Yep. And that is the inference which we are led to make by the report, but it is incorrect. It is therefore perplexing as to why the AAIB or the DGCA allowed this now proven to be false implication uh, to be published in the preliminary report. And up until now, we said the report is misleading or vague or uh, incorrect in places, but you know, it makes you wonder if you can believe anything in the report um, uh, with all of these discrepancies and differences uh, being found. And I think the AAIB should issue a supplementary or an update to the preliminary report and correct the record. And somehow I think I'll be writing another email to the AAIB. Well, you may well recall, Richard, that uh, two weeks ago, we also called for the AAIB to issue a supplementary report because of all the discrepancies, we, discrepancies that were surfacing two and three weeks ago. So it just gets worse as, we, as more analysis is made. And also we're getting fantastic feedback from our viewers who are also drawing our attention to anomalies in, in the report that we had not considered or had overlooked. Um, and of course, also some of them have a high level of expertise in the 787 as well. And... Um, so, yeah, the, it, it begs a supplementary report. It, it does, and it's getting uh, quite urgent, uh, uh, to be frank. Yeah, it, 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 all credibility on uh, surrounding Indian aviation um, is, is crumbling away. And I see uh, there's been a report um, in the His Hindustan Times that um, there's a, an audit on Air India not related to this accident, but uh, has shown up multiple breaches on a, on a range of maintenance things, training, simulator items, 
um, replacement of parts. It's not, it's not a very good look at all. No, it isn't. And we need clarity and transparency uh, from the authorities. We need to understand uh, what's going on, what the findings are, and what measures are being taken to resolve uh, these issues. Mm, indeed. And, of course, not only for the families, but the wider aviation community, because a lot of our viewers are also still saying, I don't want to fly on a 787. You know, and so either the 787 is a contributing factor or it's not, and it has to be absolutely ruled out one way or the other. Yeah, and until we get clarity, you can understand people uh, being uh, reticent to, to uh, continue to fly. And it's not just the 787. I think a lot of people um, on any airline, on any aircraft, uh, bookings are down mm. until uh, clarity um, uh, is uh, maintained. It is, yeah. Well, Richard, thank you very much indeed for this uh, some more amazing research that you've done uh, into the, uh, the timeline and uh, also the RAT timeline. Um, it really is just very fascinating, but also deeply disturbing uh, work that you have uh, produced. So thank you very yeah. much indeed for that. Um, You're welcome. Our viewers, that's all we've got time for. Now, we do promise that we will be back tomorrow with uh, your questions. Uh, and there's lots of questions. We certainly will be back tomorrow with that. So please subscribe to us. Please like us. Please keep the comments coming. We love the comments. We love the support. And do keep those fascinating questions coming. They really are, uh, fa they are fascinating and they really do challenge us. And um, we'll try and get to some of them tomorrow for you. So thank you very much. And please do tune in tomorrow. Thank you.